Hello, Fighting the Illini Nation. It's my honor and privilege to be uh, joining me today is legendary Illini head basketball coach Lou Henson. Always been a Hall of Famer in my book, but now you're a, a, a real Hall of Famer, just inducted into the College Basketball Hall of Fame. Coach, how are you? Ryan, I've known you for years. As a matter of fact, you came in here as a freshman, and we gave you some uh, being a manager and this and that, and pretty soon you became my assistant. By the way, you have to air this. If you don't, I won't go on with the interview. <laughs> okay, you came in, so then you took over assistant coach's duty. We did recruiting. We did all the things that assistant coaches do. You're one of the most talented guys I've ever worked with. I would like to have you right now, Coach. Well, I... I, believe me, the, the program is in much better hands with Coach Gross <laughs> and his staff, but uh, I did have the great uh, pleasure of being one of your student managers back in the 80s and, of course, with the Flying Illini and all of that. It, it seems like yesterday, but, but here we are in the renovated State Farm Center. I guess it'll all be, always be the Assembly Hall to, to a lot of us, but you look around and see, uh, you know, how it looks with the orange and blue seats and, of course, Lou Henson Court. Uh, how, how do you feel about that, having your name on this court and being responsible for so much success in this building? Well, Ryan, uh, first of all, it's a, it's, a, it's a very prestigious thing to get and quite an honor. We're really pleased to get that. But, you know, there are a lot of people contributed to that, not only my players, which play a big part, a big part, and, and then assistant coaches. And we have fans all over the state, tremendous support, and that's why my name is on the floor. Well, you know, a lot of coaches would love to have their name on one court. You have it on two courts, well, <laughs> both here in New Mexico State. Well, but, Ryan, yeah. what I tell people, John Wood, look at all his championships, <laughs> right. and they say, uh, and they talk, talk to me about Wood. I said, he, he and I have something in common. Of course, they think about how many championships have you won? No, we have two courts named after you. You have two courts <laughs> named after you, but this one is very near and dear to your heart. Uh, 21 seasons you spent here at the helm of Illinois basketball, 423 wins. Uh, you know, the Big Ten Championship in 84, the 89 trip to, to, to uh, the, the Final Four. Uh, as you reflect on all of the memories over the years, uh, you know, what, what stands out to you? Or what, or what different moments stand out that, that are really special? Well, first of all, coming to the University of Illinois, Ryan, is the best thing we've ever did. It's been quite a journey. My family and I all, and, you know, we've had a, a great run here, and it means a lot. But uh, it wasn't always easy. When I came here, it was in bad shape. Uh, we weren't getting black players out of Chicago, and, and a lot of the head coaches wanted to be head coaches here, and that was a problem. So it took us a while to get it going, but the first year I got with my assistants, I had very good assistants. I said, now look, this is a great state for basketball. We must do a good job in the state. And so we decided to get into 400 high schools. Mm -hmm. We know we couldn't recruit you, but just get in and make, uh, make good impressions, maybe on the coaches and all. And so uh, we got in over 500. Now, oh. back then, you could recruit seven days out of the week. We're out all the time. Like Mark Coombs mentioned last night, he saw this one player play 30 times. Wow. So we wanted to do and that finally caught on. We finally got a pretty good player out of Chicago. And then our final four team, all players was close. It was in the state of Illinois. So, so your plan coming in was, hey, let's just secure the borders. Make sure we keep the best players in the state, in the state, at the state school. And, and that formula worked out pretty good. Yeah. See, I was so. there getting all the kids, Indiana. Indiana's winning national titles at East Tennessee. We had the best coaches and the best personnel in this league when I was here. You can't believe how good they were. Just fantastic. And it took time to crack that. We finally got it with the great Illinois players. We got it done. Let's go back to the beginning of your career here in Illinois. You mentioned uh, the program was not in good shape when you arrived back in 1975. Uh, it took you six years to get to the NCAA tournament? Uh, we got there in four. In, in we got four, there in four. Okay, four My years? fourth year, fourth year I had a good ball. I think it was the fourth year that uh, we played uh, Michigan State or had Magic. They were number in one. In 1979? Yeah. And what them off here. Yeah, and then what happened, Ryan? Uh, the next game, uh, I outsmarted myself. We were playing Ohio State and had a good ball club. We had a four-point lead with 40-some seconds to go. I knew how they'd cover out-of-bounds plays. I, I knew we could score. So I set up the play where Eddie Johnson said, pick, pick and break to the basket. Mm -hmm. He did. He was wide open. Carter Scott blocked his shot. They <laughs> fouled us. We missed free throws. We lost that. Go to Wisconsin. We're, we won that with 16-1. But uh, we had a guy, point guard, tear up his knee. and. After that, it, it was a struggle. Uh, you know, there's so many, <clears throat> pardon me, so many things that happen over the course of the season. You have to adjust, uh, be it injuries, 
Uh, sometimes players you recruit don't work out. Uh, but one thing I learned from you being a part of, 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 of your staff as one of your managers and you always instilling your players to continue to fight, to keep fighting through and to be tough. Uh, for you growing up in OK, Oklahoma, uh, going to New Mexico State and Las Cruces, where, where, where did you learn or, or find that just that that uh, undying will to continue to fight? Ryan, uh, we lived in a, uh, in a, on a farm near a city, about eight to 10,000. Well, I played baseball for a guy during the summer. You served in the schools, this little school, only 300 population, right. not only six of my graduating class. He said, what, I'll pick you up every day and take you to school, why don't you come down and play? And I really liked him. So I was a recruited athlete, not, that, not a good <laughs> one, but I was recruited. And so uh, I had a good career down there. And, and then I wanted to go to Oklahoma State. That's where I wanted to go all the mm. time. Well, didn't get a scholarship. My coach said, you go to these smaller schools, you go to junior college, and maybe you go to Oklahoma State. Well, I went to junior college two years. I didn't get a scholarship at Oklahoma State. My roommate did. So I was disappointed. <laughs> well, anyway, that's right. when I went to New Mexico State. But let me tell you about Los Cruz. Let me tell you about OK High School. You've never heard of it. OK High School, I had six in my graduating class. Would you, believe that, would you believe that four of them got their PhDs and her manager got a medical degree? You know where that put me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you turned out pretty good though. You, you did okay for yourself from okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, your, your, your roots growing up there in, 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 in the heartland, that instilled that toughness and that will to fight in you, didn't it? Yeah, well, I, I had some of the great coaches along the way and I mentioned this last night, Ryan, uh, I think discipline is the key to it. I had great discipline. My parents were and my coaches and all this, and I got taught some of the basic things that you really need. No team can win without good discipline. Now you let the players do what they want to do. They'll have a good time, but you're not going to win very big. Mm -hmm. So I had great coaching all the way. And the discipline, uh, that, that's uh, enabled you to continue to you know, move along in your life. You got a birthday coming up in January. Um, don't ask me how many. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't even put candles on the cake anymore? Not anymore. Yeah, yeah but uh, you, you look at this building, the floor, of course, it looks uh, so different from when you were on the sidelines coaching. Uh, what are some of your favorite memories from here when you were coaching your 21 seasons at the home? Well, there were a lot of memories, a lot of good. We had a lot of great victories here and uh, not as many as we would like, but we had a lot of them. And, I, it's hard to pick out one. Uh, of course, when we beat Magic that time, that had to be one sure. of them. And going to the Final Four was nice. You know, one thing that happened to when I was here, some sometime in coaching, you have to have a little luck. In 1984, we had a tremendous team, might have won it all. Right. We had to play Kentucky. Kentucky, they had those two seven footers. Then we got a question from call at the end. <laughs> so, <There's> uh, that. <laughs> so we might have won it all. Right. In 89, we had a chance to win it all. We go down and play LSU. Uh, and we beat them. We only had a 10 point lead. Uh, Dale Brown's a good friend of mine. So uh, we had jumped this over. We were, went over 100 points. I put in the second team. They shot better than the first team. I so after the game, that. Dale came and said, Lou, I really appreciate you ho trying to hold down the score. I couldn't do it. <laughs> we set a record 126 points. I remember that. So that team, we got in the finals. The reason against Villanova, we had a 12 point lead with three minutes to go. They fouled us five times. We missed five free throws. They made four three-point shots. Now, how unlucky can you be? And then the next 89, we go and win two games. We get to Louisville. We play them battle slips on water yes. before the first game. Uh, up in Minnesota. And, and couldn't play. And then Lowell sprained his ankle. He couldn't even work out the next week. And we had Michigan down three weeks before 25, beat them twice, and he beat us on a rebound shot. So you got to have a little luck, don't you? You, you do. Uh, you had to bring that back up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. In I had Seattle, to you had to do it, but still, uh, you know, so many people, uh, wherever I go, you, you, you mentioned the flying Illini and everybody, oh, that was my favorite team. Love that team. Uh, even some of the guys when Kenny Battle and Kendall Gill back, uh, as you were honored, they're still treated like rock stars. Uh, how much do people talk to you about that flying Illini team as you travel around the country? That's all they talk about. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about anything else because it's uh, around, in my coaching career over 60 years, I've never team, been around a team so exciting. Teams, six, five, six, six, and great athletes could score, they could do it all. Not only that, they were outstanding people, they were dedicated. It was just fun to coach them. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for spending some time. We've got much more coming up with Coach Henson, so make sure you come back here on RBI here on FightingTheLionEye.com.